Hey, what's going on everyone? Have you ever poured hours of print time and loads of filament into a project only to have it break? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an internal skeleton structure to reinforce your prints. The simple trick will save you print time, filament, and a lot of headaches in the future. So stick around as we level up our Bamboo Studio skills. Let me share a recent experience with you. I was assembling the lower mandible jaw on my 120% scaled Allosaurus. I just knew I was going to have a problem. The weight of the entire jaw was putting an immense stress on the U-shaped piece that connects both sides, causing a lot of flexing. Unfortunately, I had already glued the mandible together starting with a piece that was structurally weak. After completing the assembly, I decided to take a few photos with my daughter to show the immense size of this thing. My worst nightmare happened when I was carrying it back inside and the mandible snapped right in half. So today we're going to modify this weak part, fix it, and make sure that this doesn't happen again. Let's dive right in. All right, so before we get started, first thing I wanted to do was show you exactly what I'll be creating in this video today. My goal is to not make this internal structure perfect, but just to give you an example and an idea that you could take with you and utilize for any of your, your future projects. So as you can see, I created kind of a U shape that follows the structure of this mandible. If you look in the front, you can see where the weak point of it is. You've got this, this little cove on both sides that comes in where you got a thinner area, you know, where it's going to definitely want to create a, a crease or a crack. And then you have some missing infill down here just for the structure of the, the bone. So what we're trying to do is give this model a more beefier internal structure to help prevent it from breaking. All right, so that's basically it. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a cube primitive. Right click on the build plate, add cube. What we wanna do is assemble these two together. So if you select the two models together, let me go ahead and collapse this. If we select these two models together, right click, click merge. Now you can go ahead and select this cube. You can see they're in a group now. Let's go ahead and move it. I believe this might be a bug, but every time you select a part from here and you use the shortcuts, they don't work. So you have to first click on the icon for move. We're going to just go ahead let me switch to top view, control one, and bring this cube over here. S for scale. If you hold control down, you can move one side at a time. So basically what I'm trying to do is just give it a little bit beef up in the front. If I move this up and down, let's go ahead. So we are going to have a little bit of an issue there. Let's go ahead and switch to scale. Must top view. And pull that in a little bit. Still sticking out a little bit right there. I'm going to move it in. Like I said, I'm not trying to make this perfect. If I, if I wanted to make it perfect, we could be here all day. Looks like it's sticking through a little bit down there at the bottom. I'm just going to give it a little squeeze. All right, let's go ahead and move it back up. Now, next thing we want to do is let's pretend for a second that we're printing this mandible in PLA. Obviously, PETG is going to be a much more structural sound um, filament to use for our 100% infill. So what we're going to do is if you have a if you have an AMS, you can go ahead and change the filament of what our internal structure is actually going to end up being. To do that, we just select our cube over here, right click on it and change filament. This will accomplish two things. One, we can see it a lot better now because it's not going to be white on white. It's actually going to, you'll be able to see the protrusion. And then now our internal structure is going to be a, a different filament type of PETG which is a lot stronger than PLA. Let's go ahead and top view it again. Now what I'm going to do is give this one a name. If you just double click over here, let's 
call that one front. Actually make some copies. So control C, control V, control V. So I made two copies. I'm gonna move them here for now. And here, and then we're gonna name them. This one will be left. This one's gonna be right. Go ahead and rotate. So if you don't know how rotate works, in the inside ring will snap to 45 degrees. The outside ring will snap to five degrees. So um, I'm just gonna do a 45 for that. Looks about good. Switch to our left. I'm gonna rotate that one a little bit. I don't know if 45 is actually going to work, but we'll find out here in a second. Since it does have a kind of a protruding uh, sh shape here in the front, I think if I pull this down, it's gonna stick out here in the side. So probably if I go top view, probably are gonna be a good idea to move it in a little bit more. And I'll just do the same thing to kind of give it a little bit of a match. You do have some more, more meat on the inside here. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and make a couple more copies. So control C, control V, and then left, control C, control V. Let me go ahead and let's do some moving. I'm just gonna move it here for now. And we'll call this left two and then right. Two. Let's go ahead and move this one out here too as well. R for rotate. Go ahead and basically what I'm trying to do is aim this from this direction straight into the corner. I don't want to go too far because there is a peg hole right here. So I'm just going to rotate a little bit. So. Maybe it's probably going to be too much, actually. I'm just trying to look at the structure here a little bit. Um, and then go ahead and S for scale. Hold down, hold down control. Pull on, pull on out a bit. Now, don't be afraid to make these different. They don't need to be all the same, you know. So you can, let's say, pull this out a little bit here. If you wanted to give it a little bit more of a beefy structure, it looks like we're going to have a little bit of, of room to go ahead and move this piece out wall out a little bit too. Um, but let's go back and get this one situated first. Again, I don't, I'm not trying to make this perfect. I could sit here probably for a good hour and mess around with this. If I really wanted to. S for scale, hold down control, pull this side out. Uh, I think it's looking good. It's going to be a little iffy right there in that area, but we can always pull it, pull this whole structure forward a little bit. But let's go ahead and give it a go. So I'm going to test it by moving it back down. First, you want to click on the top piece of, of all these, the top like front or whatever you have at the top, hold shift, click on the bottom, click on the move tool. Let's go ahead and pull it down and see what happens. So far, so good, looking good. I don't see any protrusions coming out. They're not sticking out through the peg, peg hole here. So one trick, I tried to figure out a way to, to view the internal structure of it while I'm, while I'm doing all this. One way I figured out is, well, not while I'm modeling it or creating these little, this whole structure, but if I 
if I hit slice, it does turn the model transparent so you can kind of get an idea of what you're looking at. And you can also you can also stop the slice too in the middle. Switch that. Uh, one little trick: if you switch the type of filament to does this pick anything, it will automatically transparent it, and you can just switch it back. Um, so that's that's a way to permanently make make it so you can see it for that particular slice if you wanted to look inside. I mean, this is looking pretty good. I think I'm just going to go with this. Like I said, I'm not trying to make it perfect. Obviously, you know, if I really wanted to, I can beef up these a little bit more. Definitely beef up this a lot more. I think this is good for the video purposes and the demo of, of learning this. So, all right. So let's go ahead and move it back up. Push M. Let's come back up a little bit. All right. So now how do we make this 100% infill? So what we're gonna do is, you have it all selected like I do, you can actually just change it down here. Since we're looking at the object view, anything we do to these selected objects will change the settings in the process menu here. So we're just going to basically change these to 100% infill instead of 12%. So the model's basically set to 12% infill, and then our internal skeletal structure will be 100%. So if I just click there, um, we're going to get this warning here. The triangle infill pattern doesn't support 100% density. So we just got to change our infill uh, pattern. So if you switch over to strength, um, go to our sparse infill pattern right here. Let's go from rectilinear to concentric and it should be fine. So concentric can be printed at 100% infill which makes sense because the way it's generating that pattern is it starts from the outside and basically goes around and, until it gets into the middle. So it's gonna create that 100% infill by going around the edges and then going to the next inside and then inside, inside until it fills the entire thing up. Let's go ahead and move it back down into our model. Pulling it back down. We just want to make sure we don't see it's protruding out anywhere. You will see it stick out if it is, like I'll show you here. See, if I got too far down, let's go back up. So that looks, that looks really good. All right, let's go ahead and slice it. All right, now that our model is sliced, let's switch this to line type. And then we can view the layers here with this little layer widget. And once it opens up, you'll see our internal structure sitting right inside, right there. All right, so I decided to put this all to the test. On the left-hand side, I have a 40% completely infill mandible piece. And on the right-hand side, we have our mandible piece set to 12% with a skeletal structure of a 100% and I wanted to see the difference in print times. So once we check slicing, on the left-hand side, our 40% infill is going to be a total print time of 11 hours and 16 minutes with our filament amount of 402.47 grams. And on the right-hand side, our skeletal structure print is going to be eight hours and 44 minutes and 289.93 grams. That gives us a difference of 112.54 grams of filament and two hours and 32 minutes of print time. Now let's see what happens when we bump it to 60%. Our 60% infill is going to be 536.18 grams of filament and 14 hours and 11 minutes in print time. That's a difference of 246.25 grams of filament and five hours and 27 minutes in print time. So as you can see in both scenarios, the skeletal structure can offer you a great alternative option compared to doing a complete infill on your model. This can be used in many different scenarios. Let's say you're printing a statue and it has a hero or a warrior or whatever with his arm sticking out. That tends to be a weak point. You can always go in and add a full 100% infill 
um, skeletal structure from, for that arm and to help prevent that arm from being snapped off. I did this because this was a real world scenario for me. This snapped right here when I built the entire mandible that sticks out really far to the back. I picked it up and it just broke. I figured let's, let's go ahead and create a, an internal skeletal structure like this and um, prevent that from happening again. So I hope that this video helped you upgrade your skills for Bamboo Studio and that you learned something here. And I hope that you're able to apply this technique to a model in the future. All right, again, my name is Nick, and this is Bam Bam Print. Have a great day, and happy printing.